to meet this young man and to know him representing the country uh, through sport and also to have an opportunity to come here and be with the family and the wife and the children to say, even this pain, it shall pass. Uh, I know it's not simple for the parents, for the wife, thinking that they have a future, that they have planned, but they have been robbed of that. But God knows, and he's a God. Yesterday he was God, today he's God. And he will always be our God. And we must praise him in all situations. We must praise him even today. On that note, I would like to call upon Councillor El Pumula, the district mayor of King Sojai district, to give us a welcome remarks. and the members of the executive that are with him, Umama Okosa, Dr. Umama Umavimbeda, extend our greetings to the mayor of Umtatuze, Councillor Nsongo, and Councillor Onke Akona, but also extend our greetings to the president of the KZSN Sports Confederation, the chairperson of the Zulian Rabi Union, Mr. Makoba, and Namobonke Ababande Ukaza, who is in Zalila Kulukazi, let us extend our greetings to the government officials from the province uh, and also those from the municipalities, the districts in our country, Wasem Tatuza. Honorable Premier, we stand here today with heavy hearts uh, that are full of sadness and anger because indeed we have lost at the district of King Tetuayo, but not only the district, but the entire country has lost a son that has still that he had to live for. He's a son of our country, a father and a son in the family. Someone who has carried our flag in the international community. Uh, he got nurtured in the local uh, sports uh, activities, participated in the Southers, and like all other young people, he had the desire to go to the world and conquer it because he was indeed a very a talented athlete. But here, we are here to come and comfort his family because indeed the son has fallen and we understand the kind of pain that his death has inflicted to his family, but not only to his family now, but also to the entire country because indeed he was our ambassador as a country, he was our ambassador as a district. So we want to say to the family, particularly because it was not just a death, but we lost a son under very questionable circumstances. And we have a huge desire for justice. We have to take this responsibility also and thank the role that has been played, particularly by uh, the government, in particular also uh, under the leadership of our provincial government, uh, our premier, in ensuring that indeed we achieve this dignified funeral. We understand that it could not have been easy to achieve this considering all the, uh, 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 the protocols and logistics that are involved when you have to deal with uh, intergovernmental uh, relations that involve a uh, foreign land. So if you are interested in 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 and as I say that, uh, uh, MEC, I wish to take this opportunity and welcome everyone who is here to comfort the Miami family. Thank you. Thank you.
our court to the family. We have really, uh, as I said, people have mixed feelings on this on this day. But we'll move on to the message of condolences from the French uh, from US, Mr. C. Oh, Mr. C. Osaga. And we will come with um, uh, the dance cousin, Mr. S. Jack. First time I met Ladani. You got this part, you got this. You know, he's such a big guy, you know. I was scared because how big, you know, poetry he was, like, just like everyone else will, you know. He was a quiet, you know, individual person. Once I knew him, Friendly friends I ever had. It didn't take long for me, us together along, to both come to the similar culture. Zulu. Such an amazing culture. I could compare against my own self. I'm from Samoa, a small little island. Everything similar. We became really close friends, enjoy each other, all the company. As everyone, many agree with today, Ladani was such a good friend. Yeah. Beautiful so always lift people up and never look down on anyone. He was always a hardworking person. Although clumsy together, he was made one drive for one hour, cause to forget how the house key. <laughs> We were in Colorado one time, we were getting ready to go to Hawaii. And we went to the storage three times. First time we went, <laughs> I asked him, did you got the key? But you know, typical person would shake his, back, his you know, pocket, would say, oh yeah, <laughs> I got my key. We got to the store, 30 minutes of driving, 30 minutes of driving store. We got there, pulled out the key. It wasn't a key. Like, this is the first, and then the second time we went, we were like, okay, I'll make sure we're gonna go back home, drive another 30 minutes, all the way to Denver to get a key. <laughs> so we go again, we're like, okay, so if we have the key, Lindsay must have the key, so we come there. <laughs> he's like, got it. He walked walk up, got the key, and he's like, okay, I got the key now. <laughs> we drive another 30 minutes, all the way in Parker, go to the storage. We got there, it's the wrong key. <laughs> Man, as a brother, for me to tell, man, he once made the drive for an hour just to, <laughs> just because he wants to spend more time with me. There's nothing else because he just want to talk about life. He's such a hard woman person. It's so hard to forget. I love you so much. You're the reason why I wanted to have a family. And now I, you will never be forgotten. You always be my brother forever. Your kids, your teens, well, Nani, I promise I'll watch you over you, them for you. I don't know, I run out of stuff to say. He's such a great guy, man. You can never explain how good of a person he is. He's like a brother I've never had before. Yeah, so many times. But 
Thank you for uh, welcoming here to the Zululand. I feel welcome the family, Coco, and everyone are the best. And I promise I'll be back here again to visit us, because this is my home too. Thank you. Cousin. Uh, yesterday, me and Celeste, uh, after we knew we were going to say something tomorrow, we tried to prepare a little speech, and I was like, okay, what are you going to say? Like seven minutes or 15 minutes, so we have to share it. So his idea was to speak slow. <laughs> <laughs> He told me we should speak slow, take our time, because there's so much time. <laughs> what would I do with the whole seven minutes, bro? And now I'm going to try and speak slow. <laughs> Not that I don't have anything more to say, but I'm trying to catch up to that seven minutes. Ngobasi nasa zotu tozana, jemongi. Minulindani, skulilai. I always knew him as a great person, who's loving. Uh, let me say here, who is Lindani? Lindani is a husband to Lindsay, a father to Nsizwa, Nsizwa Raiza and Nani. A grandson to Uncle Okikai, a brother, a cousin, a nephew, a friend to each and every one of us here. And then spend most of his time with friends, as you can see, all the way from this age, where Celeste is one of his friends uh, to support. And we made a lot of friends playing rugby, and even we have scouts here. He was also in scouts. So he's always been a humble person with a clear mind and an achiever in everything that he said his mind to. But one thing he failed on though, look at me. <laughs> he was so handsome, but he failed to take me to the gym with him. <laughs> And I can't even fit to the family t-shirt right now. <laughs> I'll hold that against him. <laughs> he failed me on that time. I remember, uh, even during that, there's a witness to that when we used to play rapids Kawin, uh, there was this time we were supposed to jog, and I was like, yeah, let's go jog. With this other friend, who's a man in rapids, they also know him in spa. So I was like, okay, put on my tickets, and like, went and hit the road. I couldn't even do 100 meters. <laughs> I just sent back and I said, ah, this is not just for me. They just sprint and went off. We were supposed to like do the half of the scouring, but I couldn't. So yeah, he failed me on that one part. <laughs> so it's like, take away the song, the Rakudu, and see, this is a song, lead them the same time, and so stay the same time. So his spirit will always be, he is always going to be with us. And Lindsay, stay strong. We are here for you as a family. On season on Nandi, so but like again, assume the so both clients are that. And thanks to everyone for the support, even the government. Several Marcos. Sibonga, thank you very much for the messages and the ways of encouragement. Thank you. 
on the Huti, I made the mistake on the time, then I corrected it and then asked you to come uh, on the podium to make the remarks and also hand over the test to the refugees. Most of people who are involved in school, they will know. After schools, their kids, they spend time with us in the training field. Most people that, um, most parents, they will know their kids are with us over the weekends. We travel with them to play games. There is no consent form that they sign, but they happen to trust us with their kids' life and their safety. We don't, we know them better than you do as parents. I've never thought at my age I would standing here sharing the life of one of the people that I've mentored and coached. I'm not old, but the man is also younger than me. That makes it much more difficult for me. I see there are coaches that are here in attendance, there are players that are here, and it never crossed anybody's mind that someday one of your mates, probably your opponent player, he will come and share the moment about his life. As a sport federation, in support of the family, we are devastated. We lost the brother, we lost the player. We lost a, a, a fellow mate. Um, it becomes more challenging for me because the region of this county that we have, it's a, this county is a township. Most all of these boys from Essica win. I see them through their rankings going up, 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 up because they started from these heads. They started from these heads. After my work, I leave everything. Okay, I work everything. This is what I do after work. This is what I do. This, this, is, this is my passion. This is my passion, sports, particularly in rugby. A little line was part of that. Funny thing, we've grown so much in Little um, I was part of the recruitment in this world about three years ago, three, four years ago. I was coach, part of the group, um, men is well I can't 
see that they're like overwhelming. I'm trying to think um, what next to say. There's so many things to say. Um, I'm, all, I'm also here on behalf of Zululand Party Federation. We've got also the ascendants of KwaZulu Native, Zululand Army, KwaZulu National Party Union, uh, council members that are here, also in attendance. Um, uh, with your permission, um, Dr. Moro, I would like to also call upon Wabu Pias, uh, is a council member in Wazunat region, and uh, with Umanja Matozi, or oh, Chairperson of Eskalini uh, Club, uh, to assist me to hand over the chairs to the family. Sport, we are complicated. We felt, you know, um, if we uh, as an uh, we can say thank you and our brother will leave with us and we would like one of the members to come forward and receive the chance that we have. Uh, of, uh,
that kind of a team, working, playing, practicing, and going to face the opponents together. Then it's not good to see a woman by Moko. Malokuya to do that. Malokuya went to the toilet, who was in the corner, who was woman on a business card. And this was a mouth to be lead, she said, she said, when I was somewhere, she said, they are now to come in for us. Whose light has shined across this very land that we are in. An ambassador for sport and an ambassador for our country. And on this day, I would like to recall one of the quotes by a great American, Martin Luther King. He says, An injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. A 
And if we don't, <clears throat> as a country, and as human beings, see the threat of injustice brought about by racial discrimination, we will perish together as flesh. And so, gathered here on this sober moment, we have a, a very difficult task to comfort a family about the loss of a loved one whose career has just started to blossom and upon whom they might they must have placed their hopes because sports has the capacity to take a children, a child, born in poverty, to experience the world and bring the world to his home. So we say to the family, with heavy hearts, But as the pastor said, as the bishop said, even when we cry, we, don't, we do not cry as if it's in a few. Because in faith there is belief. And we believe that God will make a plan. To the children and the wife, we really have no words to say. It is true that ch when children are born, they have no concept of what the world, of what world they are bringing them into. And today we are witnesses to that very fact. The children of Lindani have no concept of what just happened. And the family will be left with this pain. And so we pray for them. We pray for them as they embark on this difficult journey of raising ch a child or a children under these abnormal circumstances. In this world full of hatred. In this world where there are certain people who believe that others are inherently guilty and others are inherently righteous.
So Baba was fooled. O Baba was Zalala, Nahamba Nano. In living at the long and was in Chasin, a nanny long is a nanny at all. Mrs. Sing, Arta, Miss Sensabonk, sent a little Uluza and Bandi Nimbins, was and was a Wush or Loku, and Christo Wush. O Kalanje and Christo Wunbong and Nong, a general Kalinda <laughs> <laughs> Selling telling in and <laughs> Oh, 
yourself and my answer to my girls is I don't try it comes naturally I naturally get into trouble and I naturally embarrass myself but uh, it's an absolute privilege to be here I'm a slow learner and I want to say welcome honorable mayor MECs councillors it's an absolute privilege to be in your presence I was going to call you madam speaker but it's uh, it's, it's not madam speaker you are the direct director is that right the director and um, I really want to just thank you it's an absolute privilege for me to be here I'm not looking for a job in the municipality, but I need to let you know that this is our responsibility as local churches, is to be praying for you guys. And um, may God be with you. It is an incredible, difficult task that you have to run, especially in the situation that the world finds itself in today. But, um, and I just want to say to Gogo, Lindsay, man, our prayers and our thoughts are with you. I don't speak here and stand here as somebody that didn't know Lindani. The thing that I like, the fact that I know Lindani is it's that our faith brought us together. And so we had the privilege of having them in our local church. And I was privileged to be part of the, the wedding. Um, I had the privilege of me and my wife sitting with them as a couple, just working through some stuff. Uh, we took a trip out to the United States last year to go and minister in a church. And um, that was in Denver, Colorado. And when they heard we coming, they drove an hour just to come and meet up with us. And I can remember my last encounter with that incredible, massive, giant, but such a gentle guy. I can remember my last interaction with him was when we said goodbye. I was walking back to the parking lot. It was, it was snowy, something that we don't experience in South Africa. And as I walked away from Landani, he shouted, Mark. And as I turned around, he threw me with a snowball. And that was the last time that was our last encounter. He threw my snowball by that incredible, incredible human being. And um, our thoughts and prayers are for you. I want to let you know, Lindsay, we as a church have been praying for you. We are standing faith 
by the Spirit of God who will get you through this incredible, challenging time. To the Anderson family back in the United States, our hearts are with you, thoughts and prayers go out with you. So this is, um, I like what it says, rest in peace. So there's a, there's a word that use, gets used in the Bible quite a lot, and it is the word peace. But there's a very low standard of peace that we can talk about in our country. And we can say, yes, we want peace. Peace doesn't mean that we don't fight with each other. There's a peace that we see in the Bible, and that's the peace that we want to strive for. And I just sitting here listening to everybody speaking, I just think, man, we have we live in most probably the best nation in the entire world. South Africa is on a map, and we need to keep it on the map for all the right reasons. And um, I think we as adults have got a responsibility to to pave the way for the for the next generations to come. You know, I grew up in a, in a mining town called Orkney. There was a movie, a TV program was called Orkney Salty. It was a mining community. And I can remember as a little boy hearing a siren go off at 9 o'clock in the evening. And that siren meant that if you're an African person, you get out of town and you go back to where you come from. But I was fortunate enough to live and grow in a family. When that siren went off, my parents said, that siren should not be sounding right now. That siren is wrong. And so we can look at all the things that can divide us, but I can remember a good old friend of mine that leads a church, that led the church that they handed over to us. He said, even as churches, we so differ in the way that we do things. But yet we have a minister's fraternal where we all get together and we all try and talk and make sense and join each other. But every now and then we start arguing about who does what and this one baptizes like this and this one baptizes old young babies. They only baptize adults. They put you under the water. Some say they even sprinkle a little bit of water. And all of a sudden we realize that there's so many different things that can divide us. And so this wise man, Alex Van Lauren, said, how do we walk a road of unity? And he said, well, let us then try and focus on the things that unite us. And I must be honest, I have got the best job in the world. Because when I got saved and I joined the church that I've now had the privilege of leading, it was a church that was planted in 1994, it was called Tandaza. It means to pray. And now the church has changed its name over the years to, to solid ground, but we still want to be a church that prays. Not our local church. A nation that prays and says, God, help us. We need to find that one thing that unites us. And when we focus on that, we will be able to live together. And I want to draw your attention to a wonderful passage of scripture in the book of Ephesians. And um, there was a time in history where God's chosen people were the Jews. And everybody else was referred to as Gentiles. They ate differently. They dressed differently. They behaved differently. And in actual fact, the Jews wanted nothing to do with the Gentiles. But you see, when Jesus comes on the scene, there is division between Jew and Gentile. Jesus came to bring unity. And this is what it says, Paul says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. It says, For he himself is our peace, talking about Jesus, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in the flesh its law and its commands and its regulations. His purpose was to create in himself a new humanity out of the two and thus making peace. And he put to death their hostility by his own death. And so I love that picture. I love the picture of Jesus our Savior. That said, there's a separation between Jew and Gentile, but God so loved the world, everybody. That's why Jesus came. And I love the picture of Jesus on the cross. I don't want to say I love the picture, but I, I can see the purpose of the cross. I can see with his hands spread out and taking both nations and in his death, bringing unity. And so there's a, that word peace is the same word in the Bible as referred to as shalom. And that's how the Jewish nation used to greet each other or say goodbye. They would say, Shalom, peace be with you, or peace go with you. But I want to end off by just having a quick look at what that peace looks like. And um, the Shalom peace that we see in the Bible is not just learning to survive and live together and not fight with each other. 
Shalom means welfare, which talks about health, talks about happiness. That word shalom talks about tranquility. It's just a, it's a wonderful space to be in when things are tranquil. There's no outside influences and nothing irritating us. It talks about prosperity, where everybody, this is not about what you have, but people just living fulfilled, prosperous lives. And not wealth, but in Christ, living a prosperous life and being at peace. It talks about being complete. So it's not about just not fighting with each other. It's about shalom, peace that the Bible talks about is to be complete, free of all division. It talks about wholeness. But the thing that I love about shalom, it talks about harmony. And um, we've heard some wonderful harmonies with the rugby players. We've heard some wonderful harmonies as the ladies were singing in between the speakers. And the harmony is the sound of things that work well together. Harmony is the sound of things that work well together. And harmony is a tune, is to be in tune with one another. And so how do we become in tune with one another? That's why I say I've got the best job in the world. Because when I joined this local church, when I came onto leadership, my role and my responsibility is at every funeral, at every wedding, at every baby dedication, and every Sunday to stand up and speak about Jesus. And I'm not inviting you to come to our church because, because, of, because of COVID, you won't all be able to come at once. But I would encourage you to start visiting churches and see how unity is made possible through the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the one. And that's what I love about this book in Ephesians. It says, Jesus, ourself, himself, is our, is our peace. That took the two and made them one by taking that dividing wall of hostility away through his death on the cross and therefore bringing us peace. And if you think of the perfect peace, it's heaven, where the Prince of Peace sits today, seated at the right hand of the Father. And I'm going to close with the Lord's Prayer. Because I think the Lord's Prayer helps us to understand that there is a kingdom that's coming. But there is a will of God that needs to be done on earth. This is how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses and help us to forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all kinds of evil. For yours is the kingdom Yours is the power, and yours is the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Also extend my greetings to our beautiful daughter, Lindsay, the wife to our son, Lindani, the friends, the family and relatives, Zawamieni Nezgalins, the Honorable Premier of our province, Fabisa, the MEC Social Development, Mamun Katini, the District Mayor, our local mayor, Jomane, Kokelwam, Mama, Mama Koba, Kaba Zelegamakov, the president of the Sport Confederation in our province, Matungwane, the chairperson of Rapi Union, Oetuma Koba, the Rapi Union, all the sport fraternity the councillors, the government officials led by the HOD, Dr. Sifunda from the Department of Sports and Recreation, Mdeli Wonke Namtanje, Esi Ngabazi Libunye Nabo, Bagwamieni, Abala Namtanje, Uzo Gwenza Ingonzo, Gampo Wetulindan, Honorable Premier, before I introduce you, a mass report that you mandated us as a delegation from the provincial government to receive the remains of our son at OR Tambo on Saturday. That was a very painful experience that I had in my life when we receive our son as the cargo, no longer a human being, as we know Lindani as a human being. It was a very experience, a very bad experience I had in my life that I never had. Seeing Lindsay helpless, wanting to fetch his husband amongst the couple, it was a very painful experience. But we appreciate your leadership and your government in making sure that we support the Miele family uh, we also appreciate Lindsay, your family and friends, for making sure that you give us an opportunity to give our son a, a send off that is befitting for him. Because we would love to say farewell to Lindani, but if you have decided to bury him abroad, you have not had that opportunity to say farewell to our son, our beloved son, the husband, the father, and the grandson. Thank you very much for raising up such a man our ambassador of sports. Ulinda stands for Iguazulu Natal for East South Africa. Despite what he stands for his country. He represented us very well. Thank you very much. Mieli family, Siabonga, Gamakama, Esimawazo, Uti Angarana, Musebezi, Nwenzile, Lilo Shui, Paipi, Uti Kulisa, Uti Anangendela, Uti Nomise Mdala, I'm is very brief is to introduce the premier of our province. We need not to be introduced. The premier of our province is the leader of government in Wazulu Nata, who we have led at the world level as a councillor up to being the premier. It's the political leader of my organization, the African National Congress. He started leading in the ANC in his tender age from the youth league up to now. He led from the branch level up to the national level. He is now leading the national. As much as he is the leader, but Baba Baba. <laughs> I understand the premium amount of Oscar's Amazon routine team. 
He understands very well. So, okay. Ninga correct. In the Otagama Zondi, we call on the Nadeka Nene, and we call them equal partners. So, Ninga correct. The father to the beautiful son and the daughter, the brother to the Zigalala family, and also the son, Kampundis. That's why he is leading us very well. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Premier, to have you as our leader and leading our government. You are doing very well. Uh, here is the podium. Department of Social Development in Guazulu Natal, the mayor of this district of King Kechoy, Mayor Pungula, the mayor of Umshatuze, who is also the chairperson of the ANC in this region, Mayor Mshongo, the speaker of Umshatuze. Mama Kansela Mkize, members of the clergy, especially Bishop Telezi, as well as Pastor Neman, the president of the KZN Sports Confederation, Matumwani, the chamber, the chairperson of the Zululand Rap Union. Mr. Makoba, all councillors, especially Mr. Zondi, who's a ward councillor here, the friends from the United States of America, 
the rap union and the sport fraternity in general. Fellow mourners, numpaga tuonke walapa, eskali ni na mapetelo. We are indeed gathered here today to mourn and commemorate the life of Lindan Sanele Mien, whose life was brutally snatched away from us in Hawaii on the 14th of April 2021. Balance is in the middle. Ugulinda, koto wabusuti se sane. Goba wau ne temba. Eliti, umge nuzo kubek. Kwane leti nangele chana reshi. Koto wa true ulinda an. Umde ni wagamie ni uzo kubek And therefore, for them, kwagwane batu sane. While we are in pain on such a somber day, we must also surmount strength to celebrate the life of Linda Animi, an adoring husband to his wife, Lindsay, an adoting, an, a, a adoting father to his son, Israel, and a daughter, Nandi, a loving son and a brother to his siblings and a son, to his parent and a grandson, to his grandmother. Gako siti mama, azin uti na manji sinani. Unkulunkulu maganti. At 29 years, Lindani had a lot to offer to his country and the world. Had, not, had he not been untimely killed at his prime of his life. Those who took his life want us to believe that he was a criminal and a violent man. But those who knew him well tell tales of a spoken, a soft spoken, and a gentle giant who was always considerate and compassionate. Gentle giant who, did in a, who, who could not hurt anyone. It is unbelievable that his life was caught, cut short, so short. It is difficult to come to term that the man who, who, who sweat and his sweat voice mesurated the heart to please idols judge. Lindani used his, his voice as a war cry to inspire confidence and to encourage his rapid teammates. He also used his voice to instill fear to opposing team. His voice, which has been eternally silent, still echo across the globe as his killing has united the people from different colors, creed, and cultures. Lindani's untimely departure at the hands of police who were supposed to protect him touched the hearts and souls of many generous people across the world who joined our government in raising funds to cover his transportation back home, funeral costs, as well as the legal fees involved in the family's plight to uncover the circumstances surrounding his death. We are eternally grateful to those considerate souls who opened their hearts and pockets to help the family and the provincial government in the repatriation of Lindani's body from United States of America to South Africa. Equally, I wish to thank the government of South Africa, especially diplomats who represent us in the United States from Ambassador Noma India Mfegeto to Consular General Ms. Tandi Sunduzu for the way they've supported us and they have handled the whole matter with dignity. We are thankful to Lindani's Hawaii friend uh, who have shared memories with us. But one of them, Belo Siluchani, wrote an instructing memory 
in his honor to Lindani. He said, as I quote, Lindani was a poor soul. In addition to all his talent, he had a big heart. He was very selfless, a story that stands out to me in how we were both waiting on U.S. immigration for our papers. I was waiting on my citizenship while he was waiting on his work permit. We were both frustrated with waiting, but when I got my citizenship, he was the first person to congratulate me wholehearted. Even though he had not gotten his own papers yet, he made it a point that he drove out of the suburb that very same day so that we could celebrate together. We had sang beautifully and celebrated. He celebrated my success in the face of his waiting. He spent the night at my house. He just had a great way to make you feel good. And he was like that with me, with me everyone, with his family and friends. I will, I'm honored to have known him, close quote. This is what those who have spent time with Lindan would say. From this narration, it is evident that Lindani's selfless nature touched many people from home and as far as United States. They all sing with one voice to bemoan and mourn the cruel killing of this African son. To keep Lindani's memory and legacy alive, let us all unite and denounce the hostility and the hostile manner of his killing. Let us condemn his killing while demanding swift justice to prevail and take its course. Writing about Lindani, uh, about Lindani Mien in the, sto in the story of the Sunday Independent on the 25th of April, Apa Mukwe draw from a current statistic research to reveal how widespread is the tendency of murdering black people in the United States. He says, as I quote, the trend of fatal police shooting in the United States seem to only be increasing, with a total of 213 civilians having been shot, 30 of whom were black, in the first three months of 2021. In 2020, there were 1,021 fatal police shootings. And in 2019, there were 999 fatal shootings. Additionally, the rate of fatal police shooting among the black Americans was much higher than for any other ethnicity, standing at 35 fatal shooting per million of the population as of March 2021, close quote. And this story was further narrated by uh, the CPC, the CPC News, which told us that in 2021, in a period of less than eight months, more than 164 black people were killed by U.S. police. Some of the names were heard, and those that have caught the international community will include those of George Floyd, Verona Taylor, Eric Gardner, Michael Brown, Walter Scott, Alton Sterling, Stephen Clark, and Rodney King. All of these have been killed by none than the U.S. police. What is even more tragic is that these deaths of black people at the hands of white police go largely unpunished. We thus call for an action, unity of all people to ensure that the law prevails. We wish Mrs. Lensi and the fam Mrs. Mieni and the family every strength as they continue to, pro pro to pursue justice in U.S. courts for the murder of Lindan. We know it's not, it will not be easy for it 
to take place. It is also for this reason that we wish to add our voice that we are absolutely disgusted by this insensitive killing, but also by the manner in which the police of US are not held accountable in killing black people. Let us use our voices to call for justice so that Lindani's death is not in vain, but instead protect other blacks in the US. To those who grew with him, to those who grew with him in his calling, they tell us of a giant who loved, who loved to laugh and enjoy the village with his peers. People who know him better speak of a young man who despised violence against women and children. Those who were familiar with him attest to the way he protected his sister from violent men. We need more young men like Lindan who will protect and shield women and their and children. Lindani would have been an asset to our country and our province as we fell, face the sketch of gender-based violence and femicide, which is described as second pandemic after COVID-19. To his beloved wife, his sons, we say to you, you must know that you've got compatriots who feel your pain and will always be with you. We want to applaud you for defying all odds. In our own country, I'm sure you will know, it is not easy for Africans to become an excellent and successful rugby player. And we commend you, Itim Yalapa Mpangi Eskali, for representing the district well in the rugby and you stand for all of us. But he became a successful rugby player into a point where he went to play outside the country. But more than that, it is unusual for South Africans of his age to have traveled for this distance, going all over the world, but also don't be afraid to pursue opportunities uh, even if you would go to United States. We are comforted and heartened that the people of Skalin have fond memories of their son who hails from their community. They fondly speak of a sport ambassador who put the name of Skalin on the world map. Their faces light up with happiness when they recall that during his visit to home from Hawaii, Lindani would gather together the local youth and coach them on how to play rugby. By exposing them in the sport, Lindani was indirectly taking them away from the influence of drugs and other illegal substances which find fertile ground in inactive youth. By following sport, Lindani took a route to promote his talent, but also to use sport as a career. And this is a lesson that the youth of our country must learn and follow. It is painful that those who are good, who are good don't stay so long as attested in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 1, which reads as follows, good people pass away. The godly often, the godly often die before their time. But no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evils to come. This is what Isaiah Verse, uh, Isaiah 57 verse 1 says and this testimony hard as it is but make us to believe that Lindan was a flower whom God wanted to use as a decoration in his own place we know that as an engineering professional Lindani's service would have came handy to our country and to the province we are hopeful that Lindani will become a seed from which 
we will grow many engineering graduates from his communities to the province and the country as large, at large. Such graduates will be of great service to the country and to the people which we need dear. We pin our hope to the U.S. authorities, including U.S. President Joe Biden, that his intervention and as well as the social uh, organizations might help the wheel and turn the wheel for justice so that we will know what happened with the life of Mr. Lindan. With that, City, farewell to him, but to his wife, uh, to his grandfather, grandmother, and Umde Nwong Ewagwamiye, we say, be comforted. May you understand that the Lord, the God, will never desert you. Hamidashe Lindan Siyamuna Mpatoshe.